cool. Hi there, welcome to Make Anything. I'm Devin and this is the Dremel 3D45 printer. You first saw this printer on my channel during my puzzle competition. Dremel sent me one so that I could print out my own puzzles as well as some of my favorite submissions. And they also gave one to the winner of that competition. So I'm very grateful to Dremel and today I thought it would be cool to take a look at what this machine is all about. Recently, a lot of the printers I've been reviewing have been the super affordable entry-level printers as cheap as the $200 Ender 3. At $1,800, this Dremel is clearly a higher range product and I wanna show you what comes with that kind of a printer. So I'll show you everything from unboxing to getting this thing running, showing you what the prints look like, it's a really powerful printer, but it also has some interesting nuances. So I'm gonna try to be really thorough and share all of that with you today. So let's get right to it. Starting with the unboxing, everything is very simple and straightforward. There is a little document that tells you how to unbox and get started, but honestly, lifting the printer out of the box was the hardest part. Everything was very secure and very well packed, and this printer comes fully assembled, which is always nice. The package also included any other accessories you might need, glue sticks to stick down prints, and two spools of filament. One is their nylon and the other their eco ABS. But most importantly, that satisfying peel. Oh yes, and a bonus. All right, it's ready to go, so I flipped the switch and I noticed that it is definitely a very slow starter. In fact, it takes maybe a minute to actually turn on to the point where you can start doing things. Once the machine was finally up and running, I got greeted with a prompt for first time use that lets you select your region, your language, and then from there, you'll continue setting up everything to get started. The first thing was to connect to my internet network so that I could start prints remotely. This is something that a lot of printers have, but usually it's a bit of a hassle. With the Dremel, it was super easy, so I did it. Next up, we're gonna load the filament. And Dremel filaments come with this RFID chip so that when you insert it into the printer, the printer knows what you're printing with. The filament is housed inside the printer, which makes it nice and neat. Next up, the nozzle started heating up and I was prompted to feed in the filament. So the filament goes through this little holder and then sharply turns down into the top of the extruder, where it will get pulled through until it starts extruding. Next up, we're gonna level the bed, but before we do that, we have to apply some glue stick onto the glass bed. That's the method that this printer uses to hold down your prints. The print bed is removable and conveniently snaps into place on the heated surface. Next up was the leveling procedure, which was really nice and easy. A little limit switch tests different points on the printer, and then the machine will tell you which knobs to turn in order to make it level. It'll run through that process maybe two or three times until your bed is completely level. It's super easy, and now we're ready to start printing. From the menu, I'll hit build, and then I'll select this first option, which lets me print from files that are already loaded on the machine. So as you can see, the printer comes with several test prints loaded, and I'll go ahead and do this tree frog because it's one of the quicker prints at an hour and a half. As with any printer, the platform and the nozzle will heat up and the print starts automatically. I'm printing this model using the Eco ABS that came with the printer, and ABS is usually really tough to print with, and that's where this fully enclosed printer really comes in handy. It's also really nice that there's a built-in carbon filter for any little particulates that usually come off of the 3D printing process. Once the print is complete, we can take off this glass build plate and we can remove the print using the included spatula, which has rounded corners for once. Nice touch. But yeah, a little bit of poking and prying and this model popped off no problem. For printing right out of the box, I was definitely impressed with how well this model looked. Clearly, this is a very precise printer, but let's go ahead and see what happens when I try to print one of my own models. As it turns out, my car was missing this little snap-on plastic cover that goes under the hood. So I designed it in Fusion 360 and uploaded the STL onto Dremel's cloud printing service. So this is pretty interesting because normally you have to run your file through a slicer, a separate piece of software, and then connect that to the printer. But in this case, you can actually use this 
online slicer and send everything directly to the machine without having to move anything around or actually be in contact with the printer. So I went ahead and positioned things and I prepared this for slicing and it brought me to this menu that lets you select from some preset profiles based on their materials and you can adjust some really simple settings like the amount of infill, the number of perimeters, and the layer height. For the more savvy makers, there's an advanced tab which lets you adjust other settings that are pretty common in any slicer. And then there's also this expert tab, which basically is just a text file that lists all the different parameters and lets you change those manually. Despite these settings, however, once I sliced this, no matter what I did, I wasn't able to get the slicer to recognize the slight overhang on these tabs. So even though I had support selected, it didn't show any supports. So while this is a nice and convenient way to start printing, it's not exactly the most powerful or foolproof way to start a print. Regardless, I went ahead and sent that to the printer, and as long as the printer is on, you can start printing from your browser. Of course, we'll still want to apply glue stick to the print bed, and in this case, I was swapping out materials, so I went ahead and loaded in the Dremel nylon filament. We'll let that purge through, and then you can see those signature steam bubbles that make nylon notoriously difficult to print with. And since this is another Dremel filament, the printer immediately recognized the type of filament and adjusted the settings of the print for that filament. So now we'll go ahead and hit build, open up the print queue, and then run that BMW cap. From there, it's all automatic. The printer will heat up the nozzle and the bed, it'll home the plate, and then start printing. Once it's done, we'll remove that plate again and pop off the print. There's that hole that I wanted to cover and I can just pop this on top and it's good to go. Also, this is kind of unrelated, but can we appreciate that this hood ornament that I printed years ago in PLA held up all this time? Pretty cool. I printed several nylon parts because nylon is really difficult to print with, but I was very impressed with how easily this machine handled it. So here I'm printing out one of my hair clipper attachments and it printed out really nice. This part ended up being too flexible to actually use, but it does demonstrate just how strong this filament is. Another cool little feature is that this printer has a built-in webcam to monitor your prints remotely. And if you print from the cloud, it will automatically make a nice little time-lapse of your print. I definitely wouldn't call this camera high definition as it's marketed, but nevertheless, it's a handy feature. I printed several nylon parts. So here is a battery case that I printed for my drone. I also printed these really strong nylon hooks for my pegboard. And the one nylon print that wasn't completely successful were these garden stakes that I printed, which did end up peeling from the build surface a little bit, which is pretty common with long, narrow prints like this in a material that shrinks a lot like nylon. So overall, I was still quite impressed. I also did some more prints using that Eco ABS filament, like this replacement button for my airport luggage, as well as this part of a light fixture. This material printed great, although I realized it's not actually ABS based at all, so I'm not sure what it is. But what about third party filaments like this Pro PLA from Matter Hackers? Well, luckily this printer allows non Dremel filaments, but the spool may not fit in that built in spool holder because it's smaller than standard. In fact, I ended up cutting a small hole into the cap. That way I could still close up the printer while feeding in the filament from outside. Another option is to just leave the top open and feed the filament in that way. This is actually a nice workaround for more brittle filaments that can't handle the sharp turn that filament usually takes to get into the extruder here. It's not the most elegant solution, but hey, it gets the job done. The process of loading third-party filaments is virtually the same. You push it in through the top, wait for it to purge out the nozzle, and hit OK. The printer will search for that RFID chip, which in this case won't be there. So it'll search and search as hard as it can for a slightly frustrating amount of time. And eventually, it'll let you manually select the material and adjust those settings after making you wait a couple more seconds. Between this and the tiny spool holder, it's almost as if Dremel is trying to passively aggressively make you use Dremel filament, but I won't be swayed. Anyways, here I am printing a 3D Benchy, that classic benchmark print.
Here's the finished print, and as you can see, it looks very clean. It's not perfect, but there's not much to complain about. Here's another PLA print, my virtual reality sculpted coral reef. And this is an extremely intricate print, which came out very nice. Although, near the end of the print, the print head knocked over some of the parts, leading to a failure that could have been avoided with some adjustments in the slicer. But if we just ignore that and look at the print quality itself, it is truly stunning. Especially the fact that there is no stringing between all these little tentacles. I was definitely impressed. The same goes for this Voronoi snail. I've printed this on very many printers of mine, and few of them come out as clean as this one did. Nearly no stringing, just one little strand right there at the end. As far as more challenging materials go, I was able to print with this PET Plus, which I've had for years and years without being able to use it because it always failed. But on this Dremel 3D45, it came out flawless. This is actually an amazing looking print. I also printed out my RAM school rather small with this filamentum CPE filament. And while the print was rather stringy, once I cleaned it up with the X-Acto knife, it's just a fantastic print. I really wasn't sure that I could print these very intricate thin parts, but sure enough, they came out great. Now, where this printer did struggle was with flexible filaments. Here I was using a Sane Smart TPU, and it just did not come out clean. After more tweaking, I was able to print this Matter Hackers Pro Flex filament. I just had to print really hot at 260 degrees Celsius and very slow at 10 or 15 millimeters per second. Even then, while I did manage to complete the print, the surface finish on this was less than optimal. And the same goes for this Ninja Flex. It's not an amazing print. I'll have to keep working on flexible filaments with this machine. Speaking of adjusting settings, another annoying thing with this printer is there's no easy way to tune the print as it's going. In order to actually change nozzle temperature, platform temperature, speed, fan speed, or anything like that, you actually have to pause the print, tell it you're swapping filament, and then change the settings manually. It's just another one of those minor annoyances with the Dremel software that can and hopefully will be fixed with future firmware updates because in terms of the build of this printer, mechanically, it is a very capable machine and it can make some absolutely stunning parts. Oh, and also, scraping the glue off of this build plate is definitely one of the more satisfying things I've done. Oh yeah. That's nice. All right, there you guys have it. That is the Dremel 3D45 in a nutshell. As you saw, it's a pretty powerful machine. It can do some really amazing things. And, you know, I spent about the same amount of money on my MakerBot Replicator 2, my very first 3D printer back in 2014. And I think this machine here shows how far 3D printing has come since then. I've had a lot of fun with this printer. Overall, it's been a great experience, and that's something that isn't guaranteed with a lot of 3D printers. I think that's the real benefit of the Dremel 3D45 here. It's, it's got a really nice ease of entry, and it would be a great first 3D printer if you're pretty serious and you know you're gonna be using it a lot, and you want something that can churn out high quality parts quite reliably, as long as you're using the right materials and the right settings. All right, hopefully I've given you a good look at what this Dremel 3D45 printer is all about. If you're interested in getting one for yourself, I'll put links in the description. And full disclosure, this printer was sent to me in exchange for having Dremel as a sponsor for that puzzle competition. They haven't compensated me in any other way, and as always, I do my best to give my personal, honest opinion on the printers I review. Okay, as much as I love reviewing printers and talking about them, I much prefer printing awesome stuff with them. So make sure you're subscribed if you want to see all kinds of really fun projects and of course some future printer reviews as well. So yeah, that's it for today. Until next time, I'm Devin. This is Make Anything. Don't forget to stay inspired. <laughs>